100% banned there for Twisted Fate. Shen and Thresh also being banned out by NIP. Last one, will it be Jace? Or will they let him through? Do they have a plan to deal with him? It is going to be Nunu. That's, that's actually quite a clever tactic. That's taking it away purposely from alternate, but instantly Jace gets selected for the second time and is still continuing to be 100% pick ban. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, no, that can't be a Teemo, but I think you're right. I think they have to have some sort of plan for Jace if they're definitely going to let that one go through. And, and Demon, I was thinking about it just now, and when NIP or Copenhagen Wolves at the time started to actually make some plays and start getting some games, Sven Skeren was on, you know, Zin Zhao, Jarvan. We saw his Jarvan earlier uh, on day number one. It wasn't too effective, but he's kind of swayed away from that. He's gone, you know, to Evelyn. Uh, he's gone to a couple different, uh, couple different junglers, but hopefully it'll be a place up in here and really make some plays happen because besides Bjergsen, he really was a big playmaker for the team. They do go with the rise, they go with the Malphite, so not sure if that will be a mid lane rise, a top lane rise, a top or mid Malphite or jungle because we've seen him everywhere today. Well, one thing is for sure, Malphite is 0-4 today. He's not having a good day at all, so that may well spell <laughs> pending doom for NIP already. Creaton picked up two quadra kills earlier on on Ezreal, so if that gets locked in, he's certainly going to be a strong champion for him. RNA, you can see in strong desertions. Obviously, before, you know, back in the old days, season two, he used to be one of the main guys that decided the team comp support SK came in along with Ocelot. And obviously, you can see the clear discussions that are going on. He seems to be one of the driving forces here for Alternate as well. Yeah, he's like really the brain. He always has a notebook with him, like, a, like Ocelot does, writing down strategies, writing down picks and bans. And, you know, seeing that Ezra, you think it's automatically going to go to Creatin, but. Arne, he's like one of the first people to actually jungle Ezreal. Jungle Ezreal, yeah. yeah so it always is a possibility. Um, though Creatin on his Ezreal is ridiculously strong, so I would assume it will be going there. But it does give him that leeway either way. And Nami, I mean, she just came... I mean, obviously with the steady buff she's been getting over the past couple of patches, she just kind of came out of nowhere in that sense. And she's uh, she's been really a dominating force, I have to say. Let's we'll see what NIP go with. It's going to be the support and AD carry, I suspect. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a top lane rise and a jungle Malphite. That's what I'm thinking it's going to be. I can't see Bjergsen playing either of those champions, honestly. Sony is going to get locked in, so Deficio will be straight on for that one. What AD carry will the test go with? It is going to be Varus. Yeah, it's going back to his comfort zone where I believe he picked up a, a couple of quadras back, uh, back in the days with his, uh, his uh, Varus last season. And why not? I mean, you already have a good composition. You know, that tanky front line with Bryce as well as with Malphite. And then, of course, wow. with the ultimate of Malphite, you can lock them down with the Crescendo and lock them down with the Varus ultimate. So they have a really strong combo working, but alternate side, just wow. No mess in there. The blind monk getting selected once again. And, you know, he played very well earlier on against SK Gaming. So why not? And, of course, Lissandra, we've already seen Pharrell Nord destroying people with Lissandra. We'll see how that works out for him once again. Final pick here. It's going to be for Bjergsen. What will he go with? Well, it might not be with Bjergsen, actually. We don't know which way those champions could go. We're expecting it to be, though. I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking to myself, Pharrell Nord, last time when he did this against Evil Geniuses, he had the ability to get into to Frog and, and lock him down. But here, is he really going to get past that front line and then be able to be safe? Because you have Ryze there to obviously help him out, and they don't really have anyone to dive in with him if he does go for that. But it looks like... We will actually have oh. Bjergsen on, on Rise or on Malphite here. So it is going to be Sven Skeren going on towards Nautilus. That means the support lane. What are we seeing from this, really? Because it's a pretty aggressive lineup from Alternate. We've got the poke from the Jays. You've got Leeson that's going to be diving in there. Lissandra's probably going to dive in with him. And then Creaton's going to be sniping away from range. Well, let's just say this. The damage they have is going to be really strong. It's going to be hard for Ninjas and Pajamas to really deal with it, though they have a very tanky front line as well for themselves. But they want to hop on someone. We saw Frog in, uh, hitting Caitlyn in their game, uh, Yellow Star, and just blowing him up instantly just because of how strong he was. And they might see something similar to that as well. It's just all about keeping the Tess and Bjergsen alive, I think, for, for an IP. Well, and what are NIP you doing? I mean, we, obviously, you've got Sven Skoen that's going to be going in. You're going to have definitely Godbro piling in alongside him. Right? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hope we don't see that poor screen anymore or the attempt to reconnect, because God damn it, I may well have a seizure. <laughs> so. Ninjas in pajamas on your screen right there. You are going to see Bjergsen on Rise. And you said he's actually not that explosive champion. He can be. If he's allowed to get fed, if he's allowed to get strong, oh, yeah. he will burst you down very quickly. Yeah, easily. It's really hard to deal with that, especially that snare uh, very early on. But he also provides decent ganks, which can work with Bjergsen's style if he wants to you know, visit top lane, where you're going to have a guaranteed slow. Uh, even bot lane with the Crescendo, the Vars ultimate. He's not running teleport, though, which is really key, because most Rises that we see will run teleport. So he really wants to go for some kills on a Pharrell and Lord. 
ultimate setting that trap up. Normally it's wicked to walk headlong into these bash bushes, but <laughs> I wonder if Deficio may well do it. I think he's got the rest of the team are going to go with him, and they are stood on top of that ward right now. They know that they're there, and they're actually pinging it and going, they're all missing. I wonder if they're stood waiting for us. And sure enough, a five-man, they're oh. going to maybe go across. Bjergsen is that Deficio would get dropped very quickly. I think he just saw them. I yeah, think he, he just saw Creaton. Yeah, he might have saw like, just, like, just a fair pixel of him. And it's kind of funny because in the last game before we made it, Alternate actually invaded the red buff of NIP, put a ward down, then switched over to their own red. And, and now let's start exactly where he's going to be right here. And there was no late, or there's no uh, invade in the end uh, for either team. So we're seeing what's going to happen this time. And it looks like we will still have normal lanes, even. Yeah, it was the Explorer ward used by Deficio as well, I believe. Seeing if he can uh, get vision there. I think he was. I didn't actually see whether that was going to be used there. We are going to see a potential invade. You can see Shot Blast hitting Bjergsen in the backside, trying to keep those raids busy. Realm Lord just trying to prevent him starting off there. And of course, that's going to force Godbro just to go back to that top lane. He didn't get the experience, the, the extra he required. And this time, it is going to be Kirk going up against him in the top lane. And of course, Realm Lord will be in that mid lane up against Bjergsen. Yeah, so that Wraith invade was actually perfect for, for Pharrell Lord in the lane. It's a little hard for him to deal with uh, Bjergsen if he gets an early level advantage against him. So just trying to keep him behind as much as possible. And Svenskeren did end up saving his smite at blue buff. And as you see in the bottom lane, we, we, we talked about a little earlier, you know, what side would we favor in this kind of matchup. And I mentioned it's a little bit skill-based, but Sona and uh, Varus as Tess actually taking a huge amount of damage relatively early on. And you know what, if that Aqua Prison had have landed on the Tess, I think he might have died there. Because Crazon had hit level 2 just a little bit earlier, the Tess now has just hit it. And we had that Arcane Shift and that Mystic Shot to just burst him down very quickly. Yeah, but, uh, and the thing is, as you're seeing right now, uh, I ended up deciding that, you know, Sona and Varus, you have a lot of poke, you have a lot of damage, but you can out-sustain alternate with this Nami, because, I mean, you do have a heal on her, but you can't use it as often as Sona can. You can't really uh, be as aggressive with your poking. Gold is very close between them, as you would expect. We are only three minutes into the game. It's not like there's been any drastic changes just yet. The top lane, of course, where we do see the jungler of Aaron Egg trying to sneak in towards that bush. He has got the double buff. Godbro's going quite aggressive here. Maybe Kirk's going to try and bait him in. Whether he's spotting that one, Godbro immediately just goes passive there, checks that top bush. Aaron is hanging around here, chucking through a pot. He's going to be high on the hit points. By the time he does decide to go for this one, this could be the bait. He's going to try and get in. He's going to go on towards that siege minion. Will it be enough to take him down? No, I don't think it is. Just the simple tier tankiness, the passiveness of God, bro, is going to be enough. And Lee Syndrome is not going to be the case for RNA. He's not going to be baited for that one. And we talked about RNA on his Lee Syndrome when we were over at the uh, uh, expert test a little bit earlier. And his presence around the map was just phenomenal. And he's doing it yet again. Uh, I mentioned earlier before we had the pause last time was that Godbro is joining that 8 flat magic pad mixed in with 8%. So he wants to go a little bit of damage, like the sword boost, the haunting guys potentially. And great job of Arnea to kind of get that flash burned at least. And that makes Kurt feel a lot more safe there. Well, Sven Skerin is trying to do a similar to Frelnor, but he's staying very close to that top river bush. He knows that it's secure because he's got that ward just above. So he knows that there's nobody going to be in that bush, which is why he's staying so close to it. That's his escape passage, should he require it from Bjergsen. And you can see he's very cautious of Bjergsen getting close to do that room prison on him. And I think that's why Sven Skerin's decided it's not going to happen here. I'm just going to have to back away. Yeah, even a ping actually came out of Alton right there, spotting him. Like, they had no vision, but they knew exactly where he was going to be. And they're able to stop that game from happening because Frelon Lord, I mean, to me, if he's going to beat Bjergsen, he has to do it early on. He cannot let Ryze get any of his uh, really core items or else Ryze is going to just outlast him in these fights. But relatively slow game. We have passed the point where we were or earlier when we had that pause. No kills coming in just yet. And still, I mean, the trading we've been seeing, you know, we saw Tess get very low at level one, all healed up now, Cretan as well. He's not really having a hard time here with that life, uh, with that life steal. Tom, how, how do you match these, the Ezreal versus the Varus, as, as AD carries if it? If it was like, say, I don't know, both had an Infinity Edge or something, not the build that on Ezreal these days. But how do, you, how do you stack these up together against each other? To me, one is more about team fighting in terms of Varus. Like, you want to get that ultimate down, you want to lock it down with this combo you have, so you want to go for that. And then over for Cretan on Ezreal, it's more about a little bit of solo play, but it's also about kiting really well or catching someone if you do go the blue build uh, with those Iceborne Gauntlets. But, but you know, both AD champions can put out a lot of damage. It's just going to depend on who gets ahead early on. Well, as the first backs come out there, Bjergsen does go back, picks himself up that tier of the Goddess. Lee Sin's going to come around here, heading in towards Deficio. Aqua Prison does miss, but it's forced to flash away from Deficio to a successful gank, really. 
And now Anaya, is he going to go around again? There is that ward just in the river above. So that pink ward that they did have down, or have got down in that tri bush, doesn't give them quite vision of that. Yeah, it's, it, it's unfortunate, but I don't think he's really going to go back around again. He's won two flashes so far for NIP, so he gave them a little bit of an advantage, but just nowadays, it's, to me, it's not really worth getting the flash. You, you need to get a kill, or at least uh, make them back out of their lane so your AD carrier, at least in this case, can push up the lane to the turret and deny a lot of CS, a lot of experience and gold over to the enemy AD carrier. Yeah, he's going to get caught out in that midline. Aaron A is coming in there. He hasn't got his ultimate, though, so he can't knock him backwards. But Ferelno went full on aggression there, used his ultimate to try and catch him out. And of course, the fact that he went straight back and his first item back was a blasting one. He's going full on aggression against Bjergsen. Yeah, just like we mentioned earlier, like if he's going to beat Bjergsen, he has to do it early on. And you look at Bjergsen's items, actually, he has a tier and a no magic mantle. So he really wanted to stop any person from happening, but they're going to be going for a dive here on Bjergsen. He's going to miss here, but that's going to be the blasting shot, and it will be enough to take him down. This time, it's Ferelno that takes it. Aaron has taken very low. He's nice still taking the minions on him as well, but it is going to get away. Will he be covered off? Yes, he will. Nami comes down in J Re, and that just pops off that heal and secures him the kill there. Very nicely played. It looks like Alternate might have found the Achilles heal that was in uh, NIP in terms of just set Bjergsen behind and they won't be able to win the game against you. Uh, it works mostly against EG back in the day when they camped Wicked out and then obviously switching over to Froggen, but NIP, like, they need Bjergsen. Like, every, every individual member is extremely well skilled, but they need that motivation. They need that, like, he's doing well. We gotta, we gotta step up, guys. But, you know, we talked about this in the, the, in the analysis earlier on. The difference that Alternate had there, you saw Kerb come down, you saw Aranea in there. They were a full team working together just to get that kill instead of just the individual solo play. Yeah, they, they know the strategy. Like, they know what they want to do to beat uh, Ninjas in Pajamas, and they're going to start executing that strategy but step by step by step. And first step was just to get Bjergsen out of the game. See if he's going to go out of it. Kerb has got that assist, of course. He's going to back off. Got that Tira the Goddess already. Is he going to push very early on for that uh, Muramana? You know, first, of course. <laughs> he is going to start building towards that. Went for the pickaxe as well when he went back, so possibly going to get for that last whisper as early as possible before he goes for the boots. Yeah, he wants to kind of do a lot of damage to Malphite, who naturally just gets extremely tanky, and you build uh, towards that Sunfire Cape eventually. But Godbo, he actually picked up a Dorn's Ring, so he wants to sustain a little bit more in lane. He's currently losing in CS, and, and honestly, Ninjas and Pajamas are losing across the board in CS. And only their jungle is really up, and that's about three right now. They have the three man stack down the bottom. RNA with that red buff on him. We'll see if he's managed to land that Q onto anyone. Deficio, if he steps close to that bush, I'm almost certain they're going to go launching in on it. Of course, Kraton will follow it up. Kraton immediately just trying to force the pressure. He's going to land on him. He does manage to go for it. Didn't get the other side of him for the ulti kick, though, so he couldn't force the test back in towards him. And he does just back off there. Nothing was burned, though. Yeah, the test played very patient right there. He had his ultimate available, and he didn't want to waste it somewhat. He knew Lee Sin's so slippery. Defisa will be hitting six relatively soon. In the meantime, we do have Sven Skarn. He's visiting the top lane here. He's trying to go for a kill on Kerp, though. Kerp has flash, has acceleration gate to get away. Though Godbro, with that unstoppable force, could make a play happen. He doesn't have boots. That's one of the main things. If he gets caught out proper, I don't think he's going to be able to escape from it, because that slope from Sven Skarn could cause problems. And you can immediately see the Arsenal trying to set up for Kerp here. He's using that shot blast from long range to make sure he gets it. Now he's going to back off. I think he's going to go straight for the boots. He said something was coming there. Yeah, it was unfortunate for Sven Skerin because he wasn't in a ward, but Kerb just that 29.50 ELO coming to, coming to play right there, backing out ahead of time. And it looks like Sven Skerin going to be visiting the middle lane yet again, but RDA is already there to counter this. Yeah, clever play. And like in Sension, he did go back. He bought himself a ward and boots, so... He's sniffing that one out. Brennan with that blue buff, just checking out. Look at that, they have that ward. They know that Sven Skarm is there, and he actually wanted to go aggressive on him there. Instead, he just turns towards Bjergsen. Bjergsen tries to go aggressive, but he's going to get turned back on towards him. It will be another kill. It's Brennan that takes it with the assistance of Aranea. I was actually thinking to myself, why did Bjergsen go in for that? But he didn't see Aranea there. And they end up going into a 1v2, and that's two deaths for him, and that's so unlike him. He was able to finish those Merc Treads, but a Ryze who falls behind early on is going to naturally stay behind as the game uh, progresses. He's already 20 CS down, and for our Lord, you saw the damage right there. Even without uh, RNA, he can almost combo him down. Absolutely. Very strong for our Lord on that champion. And who else, really? I mean, we talked about his twisty fate earlier on, which wasn't actually that or inspiring, honestly. Yeah, yeah I Not agree. Quite. I think his Lissandra play is even scarier, honestly, but that tower is about to go down, and now Spencer may well be the target for Ferelnord here. He's going to try and put the poke in on the slow on him. 
He will back away from this one, but the ultimate's gonna get turned around. Spence Garen tries to get the bounce, and if Yuxa will close the gap here, here comes Aranea, tries to turn it back on towards Spence Garen. He may pay for it with his life. He's not quite gone down yet. <laughs> but Yuxa finally does finish him off, actually, until the light. Spence Garen that yeah. picks up the kill there. But meanwhile, in the top lane, Godbro's getting poked. Kurt misses the shot blast. That will force them to both back away. Scumbag red buff. Spence Garen, he wanted to give that over to Bjergsen, but unfortunately it didn't work out. But still, they got a kill nonetheless, and they can use that to their advantages. Godbrush is going head to head against Kirk. You're trying to save him. Use the unstoppable force. Uses the unstoppable force on Kirk. Wasn't expecting that, nor was Kirk, but now he's oh. going to go down, and Godbro turns it in his favor and picks up the kill. I think you had that right on the nose with that Kirk not expecting that at all either, because that was um, that was pretty amazing just to calculate how much damage you could possibly do to Kirk. And, and realizing that he doesn't have the ability to knock you away anymore, that's what that's what NIP needed. That's like a sigh of relief because Godbro, when he steps up and plays well, like we saw Shen in the promotion tournament, like the Singe we saw earlier on in that, they can really they can win these games. Like he can carry the game. He needs to be that key carry in that top lane, and he is going to be the single split pusher of Bill, just coming into them team fights with that teleport, of course. Kerp, on the other hand, alternate have a completely different mindset in this game. They need to be poking from range. They need to be diving in those turrets. They want to go full aggression early on. NIP happy to play the long game. We'll see how it works out for them. 12 minutes gone. It is a 2,000 gold. Just a shy off difference between them for Unlord. Well, he's going to be farming out those raids because CS is who's going to keep on increasing over Bjergsen, who is out of mana right now, has to back away. And Skeren may be the target. Oh, yeah, it's going to be very careful here. And one thing I'm seeing NIP might well, not necessarily run into a problem of is that you have a mouth fight, which is, is always a strong pick. Don't get me wrong, but you have an Ezreal who's going to probably go blue buff. Yeah, it's in fact going blue buff, so it'll be a caster Ezreal. Won't be auto attack speed. You have a, a, a Jace who's going to be poking you then trying to burst you down when he goes to hammer form, so his Grand Slam isn't going to be like what they exactly need, but Deficio is going to get caught here. He's going to get caught out. He does flash just perfectly there. That's for Reynold went in. Perfectly timed flash. Got him away from that one. It is a flash burn. Does mean that the blue buff is going to be the target of focus for alternate. It has just spawned up. They have the ward coverage there, but NIP, they want to fight for this one. You can see the piercing arrow coming out onto Kerb there. I don't think they're going to be able to get this one away from them, though. Aranea did have to take it just to prevent them stealing it. Okay, so we talked about step one for their playbook for alternate versus NIP. Step one, kill Bjergsen, punish him. Step two, keep doing that by taking away his blue buff. So they've already executed those two first steps. And if they keep at this rate, Bjergsen is not going to really be doing too much. So Hopefully Godbro, as we talked about earlier, will be that force to, to really reckon with here. And RNA, he's sticking around over towards the bottom lane yet again. He might be able to go in for something. Well, NIP are going to try and invade themselves. They want to go in for the blue buff of alternate, but it's not there right now. And now alternate realizing this, they're going to try and take advantage. They do manage to put the pick ward down. They're going for Dragon. Is he going to be a bait though? They might go towards the test down the bottom here. You can see the damage coming out from Kreaton already forcing it. There's a five-member team in here. Aaron Ego, very aggressive, managed to land the cure towards the Bishop. Chain of Corruption comes out from the test. That whips out as he manages to just safeguard away. Still, the five members of Alternate, they're trying to force something down the bottom here. NIP have to respond. And Godbro, they, they did as well, because he teleported down to get in there and stop this fight. It looks like Deficio will be back in a way right now. He's very low on health, but that crescendo would be so perfect at this point. And Alternate, I think they're going to pick up their second turn of the game. Well, the Bjergsen is in that mid lane, though, and backing away. So this looks like this tower is going to be given up. It is going to be Alternate taking down the second turn of the game. Of course, the mid one already down. So that does stretch their gold lead. Two and a half thousand gold. They're going to turn back towards the Dragon. The rest of NIP trying to gather for this one, but Deficio and Bjergsen are a long way from the fight. Alternate could take it before they get there. Yeah, they very well could, but it looks like Alternate just going to back away instead. Just trying to think if NIP had enough hope to really do something about it, but clearly don't. All they really have is that Varus, unfortunately. But they stopped the Dragon. They did, unfortunately, lose one member, but hopefully they'll be able to do something here. Cretan could be picking up his own red. We might see a team fight breaking out relatively soon. Like, Alternate, they're, they're pretty far ahead in items, and, and as well as gold. And with the composition they have right now and picking someone off, they can easily pull it off. Because Bjergsen, he's not, he's not tanky still. And the test is very squishy at this point. Well, Blue Buff just spawned and was given across to Pharrell and Lord. Saw so Kerp just pushing up towards that top lane. As soon as they see Godbro there, they realize, okay, he's out of the picture. His teleport's already been used. Where are we going to push? What objective are we going to go for? It's going to be the Dragon. Godbro, he's going to have to start running right now. I'm actually, I'm not 100% sure that Alternate knows his teleport is down. I don't believe he was spotted when he was coming down in there, and they never really showed himself, but just like you said, Alternate is starting Dragons to be going down very quickly here, and NIP, they're not really in a position to stop this. The piercing arrow came across, and it's not going to be enough. RNA does take it with a smite, and NIP may be looking to try and engage here. They are going to go towards Pharrell, and that's not the right target to make it! So it's going to take him very low. He's going to be the focus, he's going to get dropped down. It's going to be RNA that turns that one around into 1 for 0 so far. 
Can they pick up any more? Chain of Corruption lands perfectly, and that should be the evacuation order for NIP. The test taken very, very low. Godro coming in behind along with Bjergsen. They're going to try and turn their focus towards him. Oh, the Q from Aaron Air not quite landing. Is the acceleration gate going to be there? No, for Relnor doesn't land his shots either. It's just going to be a straightforward one for zero trade. And it was unfortunate they were just split right there. NIP, they had uh, Godro and Bjergsen towards the top side of the fight, and the rest were obviously towards the bottom. The PCO. Unfortunately, he missed the ultimate onto Frelnor, though obviously in the end you could probably argue that he was not doing anything in the meantime anyways. But I really have to say, if NIP, I think, had a little bit better positioning, they could have won that fight, actually. Yeah, and if maybe, if they'd have layered their ultis correctly or gone in the right place. But this is what we talked about, the Vixen Bands. They have right, to right. layer everything in the right way. And when a team 0-3, I worry for what a team that has to start making those selections. You know, effectively, the likes of Gambit, we saw them trying to do it before with the... The Curse of the Sad Bullet Time oh, gosh. It doesn't always work. It's a very hard <laughs> ultimate slant to lay up. It's all very good seeing exactly how to do it, but executing it is a very different ball game. Kirk's just going to clear out all that farming up top lane. Meanwhile, we NIP. They're stacking for the mid turret. They want to get in there. Yeah, they currently don't have one right now, and the gold is starting to slip away from them a little bit right here. With these four members, they should be able to get an RNA, the only one here, to really stop it. We do have Ezra ulti coming in just to push this wave out. Well, we do see the Aqua Prison landing on towards Fence Garen. Kerb was coming down river, but he is very slow. Still only got those tier one boots on him. It is going to be a successful defense for Alternate. They're going to be happy with that. And wow, look at this. Jerry putting the pink ward down, not taking any prisoners. No, I'm just allowing a singular ward in that mid lane. <laughs> Through the gauntlet, man. Support, the support battles that Krep always talks about when he sees someone use a pink ward against him. But Bjergsen, he's still trying to farm up a little bit. He did get a you know, decent amount of free farm. He was a lot further behind initially, but look at Alter right now. They're starting to push up a little bit mid lane. They're going to start forcing NIP to group up here and stop them from being able to just split and solo farm. Realm Lord is just looking for his opportunity to go dashing in on Svenska and other. He feels now that he's got that Abyssal Scepter and needlessly large rod, he can pop anyone fairly quickly if he lands his combo on them, which you would expect him to. Kerp, pretty low on mana, so I expect he won't be sticking around too much longer against Godbro in that top lane. And that may be where the first tower will fall for NIP. Godbro has been keeping that pressure up there, but we do see Aranea. He's going aggressive. He's going in towards those golems at the moment, taking it around. They may try and close on towards Godbro. They can see him passing by the tribush. They've got wards all the way around the red bush, so they know that he's going down there. That blue buff is up at the moment. Alternate going to try and steal it away. Looks like Bjergsen, he really needs to grab this one. He hasn't had a blue buff just yet. Looks like he will finally be able to lock that one down as the Ezreal ulti comes in. But we have Arna coming in behind Godbro right here, and they, sh they actually might be able to dive him here. He does have a Sunfire kick, so he's very tanky. And the turret is very low, but instead they back away. And if you noticed what happened in that, in that last middle, oh, last couple of minutes of action was that also they grouped up middle, and then Kerp just sat in the bush in the river and just, and just sat there. He didn't, he didn't bother going towards middle, but Godbro he started running right away because he knew if he starts losing team fights when he isn't there, they're going to fall even, even further behind. But in the meantime, NIP, they're going to be pushing middle, trying to go for this turret. Arne is going to be coming in from behind potentially. And they might have a 4 and 4 engage. Now he passes straight by Ward, pink straight on him and immediately. Frelon Lord is going to go aggressive though, on towards Bjergsen! Catches him straight out and takes him down! Before he gets chance, Chain of Corruption is going to be up to slow alternate down. He may stop the escape, it's the test they're going to go for. RNA does land the kick, he's going to get in towards him. Has got his ultimate used already, so he's going to try and go aggressive. The test tries to pick up a kill on J. Reed's not going to happen. Kraton picks up a double. Very well done by, by Frelon Lord right there, just to initiate that entire fight. And RNA is still counter chung right here as Svenskeren and standing right by the side, not really doing anything just yet, as he does spite it away. <laughs> so luckily he does get that, but that's for Relnor, like I was talking about earlier. The selfless play out of him just going in, locking down Bjergsen, and then just the damage he did to him. He did absolutely nothing. Even the crescendo couldn't save him. And also now, they should be able to take this turret. And looking at the gold, you can see why that difference is. There's only a 2,000 gold between the two AP mid and the AD carry. For Elnor, he's going to get caught out. Teleport comes out from Godbro, flashes away. Knew that hook was coming in from Sven Skeren. Does manage to defend that inner turret, but for how long it was there? Just a couple of hundred hit points left on it. Kraton's getting massive amounts of free farm in that bottom lane. He's got 190 CS right now. Goes back. He's going to get that play of the Rune King. He's already got that on him. That blue Ezreal is going to be one. very, very strong. This may be the first ultimate. No! He lands on towards RNA. He does go down. NOP get themselves a kill, but they're trying to go aggressive. They still haven't done a great deal of damage to that tower, though. So all they get for that is a singular kill. They need the towers.
and they lose the top in the meantime as well. And, 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 and God, bro, we always talk about teleports, and unfortunately for him, the two he has used so far haven't really been impactful. But NIP, uh, NIP not giving up just yet. They're trying to go middle still. Brownlord's ultimate will be up very soon, though. Now the wave gets cleared out once again. Kraton comes in from the side. They're putting the pressure down. The Yerkes and he's managed to get on. Those go down. Deficio caught in the Aqua Bubble. But they do manage to get themselves a second kill. These are going to be important kills for NAP. They need everything they can take right now because they're over 4,500 gold behind. I, I can hear Bjergsen right now. It's going to be Danish, but he's like, team, please, come on. I just want to kill. That's the second time. Unfortunately for him, it was stolen away, but he does have his Rod of Ages, so he's going to be starting getting uh, the extra health, the extra mana from that. And he is almost taking up, I think, right now to deal with Brown Lord. He might actually go for a Banshee spell relatively soon just to really deal with that. And that's kind of what he has to do. That, that's what we've seen Alternate do every time. Single him out in these fights, kill him. And they haven't started going for the test yet, which without cleanse, without a QSS, and honestly being pretty far behind right now, he can't really deal with the damage either. But, as we've seen many, many times from Alternate, it's Kreaton that is the pain in the backside. It is Alternate going straight in for Dragon. NIP are close by. They're not going to run blindly into this one, though. The test of Fischio just lingering around. The rest of the team coming down with the Dragon already gone and NIP are late to the party. See, one thing I love about Alternate compared to other teams is that if they're going to group up for something, they do it. Like, they're not going to just group up and be like, ah, oh, that failed, we have to go back to lanes kind of thing, because they want to make everything they do impactful. And it's been working out so well for them as they are currently sitting 3-0. and NIP, they're, off, they're really on the back right here. Brunler was able to get his blue buff. He's backing with quite a bit of gold. Actually goes for a blast he wants, so his death cap will be done really soon. And that is bad news for NIP. I think if he gets that done in the next couple of minutes, they're going to start forcing some fights. Well, what is bad news is Kerp has completed that Muramana to the Mana Mune. And you can see uh, all the way around. <laughs> and he's got the Brutalizer in there as well. So he's going to be doing a lot more damage when those spikes come out from those shot blasts. We saw it earlier on with Frog and just how much of an impact that can happen in the fight. Just poke them down. Oh, Aranea has put the kick on towards Godbro, pokes them towards him as well, take God back. Doesn't go full on aggression. Godfro trying to find his moment to use that unstoppable force to land it perfectly. It was only hour and air they managed to pop down last time. And there's that poke I'm talking about on towards the test. Slowly but surely though, chipping them down, taking that turret down. Oh, Bronald went very aggressive in there. Thought he could try and force something from Godbro. So look at he's done just yet. I mean, yeah, Godbro down to half health here. And NIP, they had to give that turret away. Bjergsen went to the top lane. He wanted to get a little bit of farm here, which he's still picking up here or there as he, the Negatron Cloak does come in. So, actually, might go in, but wow, the ultimate of Ferelin Lord just destroys the test. Catching on towards the test, but the Chain of Corruption lands perfectly. Whittles out. They have to quickly zone away from it. And, well, a couple of ultimates use there. The test very, very low, but they do survive. Dodges out of that. Arcane, uh, sorry, Arcane Shop, Arcane True Shop Barrage. Damn it. Get my words right. Quick shot will be giving me lines later, I think. <laughs> I don't know what, but it is going to be the blue buff being picked up. Arane will take that one down. Kreaton will be giving it. Ooh, that's the Arcane shift away there. As uh, Sven Skerin came in to try and give him trouble, Arane was the one that ended up picking the blue buff. Yeah, and we saw right there just, a, it was pretty much a full combo came out of Front Lord onto the test. Well, and it's a flash, he just burned. Wow, Kraton's on some force to flash away from that one. Okay, just wants to stay alive, doesn't want to give away anything just yet, but that full combo almost was able to kill the test, and if anyone else in alternate just sneezed on him, he would have fallen over, <laughs> which, you know, one shock blast out of Kurt might have been enough to do that, so... Also, they've got to be feeling pretty good right now. They've been taking pretty much every dragon of the game. I believe that is their third, or actually, no, second at the moment. But Baron, we saw earlier how, how sour it could go between Lemondong's and Evil Geniuses. I don't think they're going to go for it, though. Yeah, it's that new magnet. It's been many times called, and it does cause problems. So many teams just throw themselves in towards it. We saw it constantly throughout the promotion series, and I think both these teams are going to be aware of that. See, to me, it's, it's like the newer teams. Oh, okay, I'm just going to see if we had a little bit of fight going on, but like the newer teams, they kind of have that problem of maybe potentially uh, not being able to finish games without that Baron, without yeah. that heavy advantage. As God you know, it's going to be again. the ultimate action on towards the test. The wave comes through. He gets caught out. The Fischio gets caught on him. You see Aaron A doesn't, the kick doesn't work. Doesn't matter. The Q lands on him. And that will be ultimate picking up a couple of kills again. Pushing through that mid lane. Are they going to go towards the inhibitor turret? It is exposed, but Ferelnold already backing away. The rest of alternate around. Kerp actually separated here. Godbro trying to pick him off. But they're not going to go for any objectives. Looks like it's just going to be farm out all of the opposition jungle. And they're just hurting him so bad. NIP is just struggling for money right now. We're 25 minutes in, and they're almost 10,000 gold behind at this point. 
And even with those skills, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, Alton didn't push for anything else, but it's like they have the lead, they want to play it safe, they don't want to give anything away because they still have that very scary initiate out of NIP. This may get focused on, he's in this mid lane, pushing on towards that turret. The open turret, and of course, Brennan Lord and Curve are close by. I wonder if they're going to try and set something up. Kreat's on in the top lane now. He's taking pressure from Godbro. Look at the damage that Godbro's starting to lay down on him. It's going to cause him problem. The Shard will be back up in a moment. It's going to slow him down. He's going to have that Arcane Shift available. He's not going to pursue it, though. Got to the turret in safety. Well, that is, that's definitely a good sign for NIP, as we were mentioning earlier, where Godbro did 1v1 Curve. Is he can, if he can pretty much solo Kreaton himself, that means he's not going to be in the fight. And all they really need to deal with is Brennan Lord and Kerp on top of that. And it's going to be tough with Brown Lord, obviously, with that pretty much pseudo Zonias he has. As they are starting to push up here, and they're getting very aggressive. They don't really have any wards down just yet. And we might need to see Deficio uh, pick up an Oracle, or, oh, sorry, Oracle relatively soon to kind of clear that vision out and maybe open up a potential kill. Now, for Brown Lord's hoping he could get behind someone there and maybe take, take the poke. There is a wave coming up down that bottom lane. It's almost certainly going to be this bottom inner turret. It will be the next focus of target. NIP are all in position, ready to fight for this one. This may be the first 5v5 we're going to get to see proper. Hey, it definitely might happen here, but ultimate, they're going to start sieging this turret down. And NIP has to be very careful as well as ultimate because of the engages on both sides. And it looks like they're just going to poke. I mean, that's kind of what they're based around with that caster Ezreal with Jace. They're going to do as much damage as possible from range before they go for an engage, and Sona can only do so much with that if Kirk keeps landing the shock blast. Well, they're going to keep on poking through. Godbro has to buy the right per perfect time. Oh, the Aqua Prison lands on towards Godbro. Godbro taking very low. The Tess also caught by that shock blast, and well, it just seems that Alton and R slowly but forward, surely driving them back away from this turret. The turret will go down, and look at that. Brenlo goes full on aggression. Man, just land his ultimate. Spence is going to get popped. The chain of corruption does land on all of Alton, oh, oh along with a great crescendo coming out from Divisio there. Can they turn this aggression back around? On them, Bjergsen does manage to get that kill off for Renlund. It's just a one for one, but the turret going down, and now Kerb coming back in. Shock blast, acceleration gate, onto one division. The ultimate kick comes out. Aaron Air takes down the test, but he trades it with his life, and it's Bjergsen that picks up another kill. So in the end, a two for two, and ultimate picking up that turret. That's a relatively good sign for NIP right there. And I don't. I wonder if Renlund actually maybe misclicked because he went and ulted himself. Wasn't he actually really didn't lock down anyone on the other team except Godbro who. It's obviously really tanky, but Dragon is back up again, and also they favor it. Yeah, they're going to take this Dragon with ease, and that's going to stretch their gold lead to close to 8,000 gold now. So definitely pushing heavily in the favor of Alternate, just as it's done so far all weekend. This would take them to 4-0. What a dream start in the Super Week for in the Summer Series for Alternate. You know, this is a team that was almost out of it. They were 2-0 down in the promo. They came back and took down Dragon Balls 3-2. What a fantastic performance. It wasn't Dragon Balls. It was, was, it was, it Giants. was uh, Giants. Managed to take them down 3-2 in effectively one of the longest games they've had for a long time. <laughs> and I have to ask, like, if you look at this, will they be able to continue at this pace throughout the rest of the season? Obviously, the, the other teams have that training of already doing it once, and they have the longevity in their team and have the patience to kind of keep going along with it. But off to, off to a running start here, they could hit this 4-0. Uh, who knows? I mean, the players have the skill. They, they all had the highest ELO in the world. It wasn't, you know, just in Europe. They had the highest ELO in the world. These guys, three of them, were the t first, second, and third player in the world of ELO. 2,000, 3,000, oh. 2,900, and 2,800. Bjergsen's going to get focused on here, I feel. You're going to see the True Shop Raj coming across. He does catch on towards him. There's the wave. They're going to ride it in. Godbro's going to be the focus target. He's getting hammered from pillar to post. Unstoppable force was used, but all he caught was Aaron Air. Now you can see Brunlund diving in. The test is going to get caught out. He gets taken down. It's a double kill. Picks up for Kreaton. Now they're going in towards Sven Skeren. He's going to have to slide away from this one. The shock blast coming in, but alternate continue the driving force back onto NIP. Does Creedon ever die? Demon? I we were trying to ask about the KDA earlier on, but they do catch Knocker Prison. Oh, Brown Lord, he wanted to go in right there as Bjergsen did pop that Seraph's Embrace, but that's just perfect engagements every time out of alternate. Well, we saw Cop from Curse having a fantastic uh, KDA last season in the North America, but honestly, I'd love to know what Kreaton's at because that guy has just not been dying and he's just been getting kill after kill. Two quadra kills in the last match, of course, as well, so his stats are through the roof, but alternate are going to be taking down the first inhibitor turret of the game, and they are breaking down the NIP defenses every single time they attack. Yeah, playing it like a tutorial right now. I mean, they didn't want to go for Inhibitor since they had uh, Sven Scared respawn as well as Godbro, and they don't want to go up against that, but still, like we were saying earlier, they're choking them in terms of the money, they're taking away their jungle on their way back to buy, and, cons and considering they have a lot of money to spend as well, a lot of items could be coming in here. Avoid Staff for, for Pharrell and Lord. 
That is going to be really hard for Bjergsen to deal with as if he was already almost dying anyways. Well, it's an 11,000 gold lead now, and you know that every poke that comes out from Kerb, if it lands, it's going to be chunking hit points down. Deficio, he's tried to stack quite a bit of hit points in there, actually. He's got more hit points than the Tess right now because he realizes he is going to be one of those focus targets. The Tess himself trying to get as much damage as he can. He's desperately trying to get that Infinity Edge, but still no attack speed on him either. And not really a great deal of help from the rest of his team. If he gets focused, gets targeted, he is going down that chain of corruption has been vital, he's been landing it. Yeah. There's nothing to follow it up. Yeah, they don't have the damage behind it, unfortunately. And I was, I was thinking to myself, Demon, how does Kurt land these shock blasts so, so perfectly and quickly every time with the trackball mouse? Like, <laughs> just thinking about that, the accuracy is just ridiculous, but just imagine what it'd be like with a real mouse. I know, right? <laughs> but Jerry, he has an oracle, so he's clearing out all that vision we were talking about earlier. As Kurt, he's chasing down Bjergsen, he's gonna be going in for this. He's going, Alkan shifts towards him, doesn't quite land. He did have that red buff on, of course, was trying to get the slowdown. It's gonna be an exposed inhibitor, and they're going straight in for this one. Kerb is not with them. This is, but then again, nor is Godbro. Godbro's pushing that bottom to it. It could be the second turret of the game for NIP if he can get it. But Kerb, what he's doing, he's shoving that top wave. They're gonna go towards that inner turret. They've managed to get a poke on towards the inhibitor. Godbro desperately he's teleporting in. He's teleporting towards the Baron area, actually. They're gonna try and collapse on towards this fight. Godbro thought he could get behind him. Instead, he's coming around towards Fence Garrett. They have great ward coverage alternates. They are ready and waiting for this fight. They might break out here very soon as they do go in. It is going to be Aaron A and just out. zipping around, trying to bait anything out. Instead, he's going to get caught out. But look at that. Not a great deal of burst coming in. But instead, Van Scare is going to get targeted. Chain of Corruption does not land. Aaron A is still in between them. There's Morello Lord. He's the only single target for Godbro. He does manage to take it down. There's going to be a crescendo landing across there. Aaron A uses the ultimate kick. And the test is taken very, very low, but not dropped yet. But Kerb drops the hammer on him. He takes it down. It's still very low across the board. Van Scare is going to be the focus of the target next. Aaron A is going to get towards him. There comes Kreaton, he is unstoppable. Bjergsen goes in, Kerb takes him down. That's another kill for Kreaton. He's going to see if he can finish off one more on towards Deficio. That will be the triple kill for him when he finally lands it. If RNA does let him get away with it, one more shot, that's all you need. There it is, the eighth from Kreaton and the triple kill. They're going to push on, they've got minions piling up the mid lane and they are just going to drive it home against NIP. They might be able to actually finish this right now. And that last fight, it was very well done by, by NIP. They caught Brown Lord, they killed him. The test survived the burst that he put out, but it's like, oh yeah, we got Phil Lord, but then you have Kerb jumping on you, you have uh, Cretan jumping on you, and Alternate, they're going to go for the win. They are going to go for the win, the Nexus turrets are going to be falling, and it is going to be Alternate going 4-0, and oh, topping the league right now. MYM, they are going to be giving chase, they're going to be facing off against Gambit as well, but what a game, and Alternate are looking unstoppable in this very first summer Super Week. Wow, what a